can I mix the Pilot Eroshizuku inks? Question mark, exclamation point. So this is a very frantically asked question on Instagram. Uh, and it's a really good question. Honestly, I never really got a whole lot of questions about mixing Eroshizuku inks back when the MSRP was $35 a bottle, because I think most people just didn't want to risk such a valuable, precious commodity. Um, and of course, part of what you're paying for is that beautiful bottle, but um, they underwent a price decrease, which is super rare in basically all of history, but really in the fountain pen world to see that, especially with ink. Um, but what happened, and I explained this a while ago back in uh, June or whatever it is that officially dropped down, but um, uh, the price dropped pretty significantly. I think we sell for about 20 bucks now. Um, and uh, part of that was because the bottle itself had to be all handmade and there just weren't, uh, wasn't a, 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 like a mass production process for making those bottles. Um, but they kind of hit a certain quantity that they needed and invested in. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable how many bottles you have to buy when you get custom glass bottles made like that. Like you guys would not even believe it. Uh, but anyway, a pilot apparently made that investment, which brought the economy of it down quite a bit because I think they're looking to sell a lot more of the ink. So that's cool. Great news for everybody. Cheaper ink, same quality ink, just same quality bottle, everything. It's just, it's just great. Um, but anyway, I have been getting uh, noticed more of an interest in wanting to mix the Roshizuku inks since the price has dropped. I think because, you know, whenever you're mixing, there's always kind of this element of, uh, you know, mix it at your own risk. And, you know, you might mix colors and you're like, oh, this color doesn't look good at all. And then it's kind of like trashed at that point. So you don't want to do that with your most precious of inks. Usually it's the less expensive, larger volume inks like Nidlers and Diamine and stuff like that, you know, private reserve back in the day um, when people would... Uh, um, want to mix those, but uh, Eroshizuku hasn't been one that's been like commonly talked about until recently. Um, so I actually asked pilots, it's kind of officially, I asked my Pilot USA folks, um, and I was like, hey, I, I'm pretty sure you can do this, but I want to be able to say in the video pretty confidently, like, yeah, it's cool to mix the inks. So I've never heard of anybody who's had any issues mixing like Roshizuku inks. And, uh, and Pilot really started out kind of as an ink company, so they really know their stuff when it comes to ink. Um, so I got kind of a quasi-official word that, like, yep, mixing the inks is good to go. They don't see any problem with it. Um, I'm not aware of anybody that's ever had a problem with it. Um, so, yeah, you can, you're good to go. There's, there's nothing on the packaging that says you shouldn't do that. Some ink companies do that. Other ones don't. Um, usually, companies are just kind of quiet. Mixing goes. Um, so just some general rules when it goes to ink mixing. Because um, I talk about it here and there, but I don't, I don't do a whole lot of it myself just because... Um, I'm not super scientifically natured, so it's not as much of like my personal passion. Um, and plus, when you've got you know 550 different inks or whatever, it's like you really have to be interested in kind of the process of mixing and stuff like that. Um, me, I can just grab a sample of whatever color I want, so I'm a little bit spoiled in that way. But anyway, um, so it's really cool because the the ink vials uh, that we use for our samples literally have a millil millimeter milliliter marking up on the side. So it makes it nice as kind of a measuring tool. And then we sell ink syringes, of course, um, which have nice little notches as well. So it's got milliliter markers, um, and it's got markers, uh, five marks in between as well. So you can get 1.2, 1.4, whatever. So you can get fairly precise with it. Um, and so that can be a really handy tool when you're mixing. So if you're going to be mixing different colors, what I always recommend doing is mixing in as small of a quantity as you uh, can and still maintain some accuracy. So I usually like to mix like maybe one to two milliliters at a time. So if you want to mix two colors kind of half and half, you know, put one milliliter of one color and two, one milliliter of another color, you end up with two milliliters. And if it's a total waste of a color, you've wasted two milliliters. It's not a huge volume. Um, or you could cut it down a little bit if you want to go even more conservative than that. Um, but that can be good for kind of testing it out. And then if you have ink sample vials, you can kind of vial those up. You can label them and stuff like that. We sell packs of vials and all that kind of specifically for that purpose, for people that like to do that. And, uh, and then you can just kind of experiment and try all different kinds of things and, and store them and use them. And, you know, you can use your glass dip pen if you want to. What the heck? For testing it out. Um, it can be kind of cool that way. Um, and if you're going to be mixing stuff, especially if you're mixing across brands or brands that don't have like the, yeah, you can mix our inks, um, you're doing it at your own risk. So um, you never want to like mix something up and immediately go and put it into your whatever Pelican Rodden pen that you have <laughs> or some super valuable like pen that your you know grandparents gave you uh, that can never be replaced um, because some inks can react when they're mixed together. Um, and they'll usually never say, 
don't specifically ink, mix this ink with this brand. Um, you're, you're kind of in like hacker territory here. Um, so you always want to mix it up, you know, shake it up really good and let it sit for several hours to see if you get any kind of reaction, any kind of solidification. If you mix it up and it seems like it's still in a liquid state and it seems like it's still kind of a normal ink, try it out and make like a dip pen or try it out in some like pen that's maybe not particularly valuable just to make sure that it's good and then if you mix it up uh, more and it seems like it's fine after a while, go ahead and use it in your, in your more priceless pens if that's your desire. But just realize that's kind of the territory you're crossing into when you get into ink mixing land. Cool? Mm -hmm.